Dave Meslin. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ford. Thank you, everyone, for staying so late. Um, I'm as tired as you are, so I'm not sure if I'll be coherent, but I'll, I'll try my best. Uh, we've heard a lot of different emotions expressed this evening. We've heard frustration. We've heard disappointment. We've heard anger. I think for me, I'm mostly just feeling confused. Um, I'm confused for a few reasons. I'm confused because we've been hearing a lot about respecting the taxpayer, yet this meeting format was set up to intentionally exclude anyone who wasn't prepared to leave their family at four in the morning. So I'm not sure how that's respectful. I'm also confused because we've been told repeatedly uh, in the media that the, we're the usual suspects who don't have jobs and were paid by unions and arrived on a union bus, which is so insulting and disrespectful to the hundreds of people here who I've spoken to today who follow, fall into none of those categories and have taken time out of work to be here. I'm confused because... I'm confused because there seems to be two gr gravy trains. There was a gravy train we heard about during the election, which I actually could buy into, that there's a lot of waste. There's inefficiencies. We water the plants too much. We get a free zoo pass, a free TTC pass. Uh, counselors have rabbit costumes. Um, yeah, I mean, if that was worth 700 million bucks, I would have voted for you too. But now there's another gravy train, which people didn't vote for, which is more of a Tea Party libertarian ideology that... Cities, as we've heard in the media, should provide roads and cops, and everything else is, is extra. No one voted for that because that isn't what you said at the debates, Mayor. So there, there's two gravy trains, and people voted for the first one. I'm also confused because we've also heard about this, this immense, powerful Ford nation which can be mobilized, and I don't see a single one of them here behind me today. If they can't take the time, as we have, to be here, why should their viewpoint be respected? I'm also confused because we've heard that the city should be run like a business, but I don't know many businesses that would eliminate a good source of revenue in a year when you're battling a deficit, which was the vehicle registration fee, and how many businesses would call a meeting for 4 a.m.? Would deco labels invite people to come to a 4 a.m. meeting? No, you would not, of course, because you're a good businessman, and that would be disrespectful. And this format is disrespectful this evening. Violet Cardella was not respected. Dunstan Morey was not respected. Randy Panagetto, Ernest Tucker, John C. Lowe, Peter Ouellette, 87 people since 11 o'clock when people went home to be with their families have been crossed off their list because of the way you've set up this meeting. If you want to trample democracy, I think that's fine. But don't call it respecting the taxpayer because that's false advertising and that's no way to run a business. Thank you. Any questions? Oh. Councilor Layton. Yep. Dave, sit down. <laughs> um, just so that in the future we don't make this mistake again. Uh, could you provide us with some suggestions in particular about how this meeting was run um, that could have been more respectful of taxpayers? Sure, sure, um, th through you, Chair. Um, and I, I, I think it's a hard balance. Minute, let it go. And in fact, I have actually um, argued that evening meetings are better than daytime meetings because a lot of people have jobs. So there's no perfect time to have a meeting. I would say that having the all-night meeting was okay but not the part where if you missed your slot, you couldn't come back. So if you'd rather do this in two days and going all night as you've done, which, is, which I think you should be congratulated for, it shows a lot of commitment, that's fine. But if someone wanted to go home to their family and come back in the morning, why wouldn't they be able to depute? That doesn't make any sense. So I think that was the problem. And that was an intentional amendment to Next exclude question. voices, which is disrespectful. Pages 34, 35, and 36 of the report, they talk about governance of, of the city and how to make government work in open and transparent government. But one of the things the clerks rep, uh, recommend quite consistently throughout all of their reports is to lessen consultation as a way of creating efficiency. I was wondering if you'd care to comment. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. The most efficient form of government is one that has no consultation uh, and probably one that has no seats at all, a 
dictatorship with one person who makes all the choices is extremely efficient in terms of like economics. <laughs> like what? Like the one we just had. Um, oh. Perhaps. Oh. <laughs> I don't. Might um, time be I mean, uh, yeah, you know what? Election is. Let me say, as an advocate, can my time hold be on. Old? Sorry, can sorry. My time that was a question old? from no, Councilor no, Holiday. No, we're done. Bull Thank you. No, hold on. I'd like uh, to respond no, to that. Sixty seconds. You're, you've done it. Forget. Okay, that's it. It's over. He asked me a question. Okay. As an advocate next, of, of consultation, question, I think the former administration next, wasn't perfect, and I was hoping you'd be better, next and question, you're worse, and that's question. shameful. Next question. Next question. Any other questions? You want a question? Councillor Davis? <laughs> Councillor Davis has another question. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Meslin. You know that there is also in every one of these reports um, a summary of the consultation that were held in meetings all around the city and also in an online questionnaire. Do you think that the results of that consultation ought to have been considered by KPMG and ought to be considered by the city before they make any decisions? Absolutely. There are probably a lot of flaws in the way the timeline is unfolding. I would say that is one. I asked that question when I was I came to the City Hall consultation here, and it seemed like the timeline was too short. So we're filling out these forms. We know how long it takes to write these reports. And I asked, is there really time for this feedback to be incorporated into the reports? And they said, uh, probably not. But we've also heard that these folks were self-selected, so their voices aren't important. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, which I Thank disagree you. with. Uh, that next was sarcasm. question. Sarcasm doesn't work at four in the morning. Next question. <laughs> All right. Okay. No more questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Two sixty-five. Lester Brown. Two sixty-five. Lester Brown. Two sixty-five. Lester Brown. Okay. Uh, Two sixty-six. Russell Stewart. You have three minutes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. I'd like to speak about a couple of issues, but all of the proposed cuts in the services in the City of Toronto are important. We should all view cuts that affect a family member, a neighbour, or a co-worker as just as important as ones that affect us directly. I live on Pharmacy Avenue, and I have witnessed what happens there when the snow is not removed in a timely manner. City buses, cars, school buses, and transport vehicles all get stuck. The police do have to be called out to help try to keep the traffic moving. When you remove the ability of people to go to work in a timely manner, you start to affect not only the individuals, but commerce in the city and productivity in the workplace. Also concerning the residents of Pharmacy Avenue are cuts to the TTC, in particular a 24-hour service. While this may not uh, concern residents in the outlying areas, to people working in, who, who live in Scarborough, it's an important issue. If you take away the means of a transport of a shift worker, if you take away the means of transport of a shift worker without a car, you essentially take away yet another job in the City of Toronto. That person may buy an older, less environment-friendly vehicle just to get to work because he or she has lost the use of 24-hour public transport and can't afford anything else. As more and more, jobs, as more, and more jobs are cut and devalued, public housing and daycare become even more important to a workforce whose pay is under attack from all sides. People on low wages, such as those paid by city contractors, cannot afford to live in condos, houses, and expensive apartments. They need affordable housing and a place for their children to be cared for while they work to try to make ends meet. From Riverdale Farm to senior services to libraries, all of the proposed cuts to the city's public services in the City of Toronto will affect us all. In closing, I'd like to say to those who think that my presence in this meeting is, as a quote, orchestrated by my union, let me say this. 
Our unions have a great communications network and are able to spread the word. Unions stand for all working people, not just union members. Unions stand for social justice. As the word spreads, working, as the word spreads, you'll see and hear more from our neighbors and working sisters, uh, working sisters and brothers. I speak for myself and on behalf of others, not because of any marching orders Thank I've you, received. Sir. Thank you very much. Any questions? <laughs> oh, Councillor Perks. Thank you very much. Um, at times this evening, some members of council have suggested that uh, there's a divide and people from the downtown want to, are willing to pay more taxes for more services and people in the suburbs want to have their taxes cut. As I understand it, you're from Scarborough? Scarborough, yes. Do you and your neighbors want to have your taxes cut and have our services reduced? The city has been amalgamated. I wouldn't actually call Scarborough a suburb anymore. It's part of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you.